presentation. Uh, also pleased to be joined, as was mentioned, by both the county executive and, and the mayor, uh, who we have a close working relationship with and will continue uh, through today's activities as well. Uh, just a little bit of an um, assessment of where we're at. Obviously, many have been following us throughout the media, but approximately uh, 4.51 this morning, a motorist traveling across the, uh, the Leo Frigo Memorial Bridge uh, noticed a sag on the east side uh, of the bridge across all lanes. A um, little bit over half an hour later at 5.30, uh, the good folks at the Green Bay Police Department uh, closed off the bridge and started detouring traffic. Uh, that's important to know because subsequently along with that, in cooperation uh, with local law enforcement, the State Department of Transportation has closed uh, I-43, and so the folks are clear. Uh, it's closed uh, the bridge between Atkinson Drive and Webster Avenue, so that section of the bridge is closed. The interchanges themselves are open so that traffic can be detoured through those sections, but it's important to know the bridge is closed not only for vehicle traffic, uh, but for all individuals unless they're there under uh, official reasons. So certainly local law enforcement, DOT officials uh, uh, working on inspecting the bridge and the piers, as well as any other uh, partners from the federal government that be assisting would be allowed up there. But it's important for the public to know uh, that until we have more information, uh, that bridge, uh, that span of uh, the bridge will remain closed until further notice. We'll be talking about that in today's press conference. Um, we also ask that people not on the bridge but stay away from the piers. Uh, the initial uh, observation is that the, uh, the portion that had the sag is about 400 feet of the bridge sagged on the, again on the east side uh, of the bridge. Uh, it, it is on the side crossing all the lanes between Quincy, uh, Quincy Street and uh, the Fox River itself. Uh, so it's not in a section over the water. Um, that's uh, a question that's been raised as well, but it's in that section and it appears to be related to Pier 22, um, where uh, at least the initial observation was that there uh, appears to be some settling. Uh, but it's important to remember in all these observations that we've got uh, DOT officials uh, from here in the region as well as the state. The federal government's offered, also offered assistance in the terms of having trained professionals in bridge inspection, looking at the bridge itself, as well as not only Pier 22, but each of the piers uh, that are involved in the structure leading up to the bridge span itself. Um, critically important that people know that, that uh, all those will be looked at. Um, and before I turn it over to the Secretary to talk a little bit more about it, I, I just want to stress from the state standpoint, I think it's something that our partners here at the local level in, in the Brown County and the city of Green Bay, as well as all the others in this region, um, certainly would share. Uh, our number one objective in dealing with this situation, which thankfully, uh, while it's a challenge, thankfully uh, uh, there's no one was injured or anything else related to that. Um, so we certainly are, are uh, thank God for that. But our number one objective is public safety. And so you'll have a lot of questions particularly for the DOT officials about how long the bridge will be closed, uh, where the detours will be, how long they will last, things of that nature. Uh, we're committed to not only working through the State Department of Transportation, but with our partners in Brown County, the city of Green Bay and surrounding municipalities. We know uh, there's a lot of things happening with transportation, with the 41 project and other things happening throughout this region. And so we want to be mindful that uh, I-43 as it goes over uh, the Fox uh, River is both important uh, to this region and to the state when it comes to transportation. It's also vitally important when it comes to commerce. We're going to take that into effect, and we're certainly going to be mindful of that in terms of all that's happening here in northeastern Wisconsin. It's a vital part of the state's economy, and it's a key transportation link in there we're talking about. But our number one priority has been, will be, and will con is, and will continue to be uh, ensuring the absolute safety of the public. And so everything we're going to do through our Department of Transportation and through our partners at the local and federal level will be to absolutely ensure the safety of people on and around the structure. Um, we have every confidence that we're going to be able to go forward and be able to ensure that, uh, but the actions we take and the time it will take uh, will overwhelmingly be driven by public safety and then subsequently our interest in preserving uh, our transportation and our commerce link here in, south, or in northeastern Wisconsin. And so that's really going to be the, the driving factor here. We want to make sure uh, that we find out 
what exactly happened and uh, not only what we need to do to correct it to make sure that bridge going forward is fully operational, um, but also that we uh, are fully aware of what caused this particular apparent sag uh, to take place. And if it's a settling of pier, we want to make sure we not only know how to correct it with that pier at 20, pier 22, uh, but we're also able to ensure that any of the other piers in that area, uh, particularly because of the land base they're built on, uh, that we have uh, a absolute confidence uh, that that structure and all the components of it are safe uh, for everyone using it in the future. And uh, that's our commitment. And we won't know timing-wise any more details until um, we get those inspectors up and we're able to look at the bridge structure itself as well as the piers and give you a full analysis. What I have asked, though, not only for the media but for the larger public, who's obviously very interested in this, we have about, what, 40,000 uh, riders a day go over this bridge, so it's a pretty busy span. Um, certainly we want to make sure that, again, from a transportation and commerce standpoint, it's open, but we want to ensure public safety. And so I've asked the Department of Transportation here in this region uh, to uh, to give you at a minimum another update tomorrow, uh, 24 hours from now at 3 o'clock roughly, uh, at 3 o'clock p.m. tomorrow to give you an update on where we stand, if not sooner. Obviously, if uh, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation has any more critical information before then, uh, we'll uh, hold a press conference sooner. But at a minimum, uh, we'll be giving you an update within 24 hours uh, at that time, at least giving you the status on what those inspectors have found and what more steps need to be taken uh, to go forward with this obviously critically important project. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Secretary of Transportation, Mark Gottlieb, uh, who's done a good job as, uh, as the Secretary and who brings to the table not only a background in an elected office, but uh, about three decades worth of experience as a PE and understands the importance of working with the trained professionals uh, here in the Department of Transportation with our partners at the county and local level and certainly with our partners in the federal uh, uh, Department of Transportation. So with that, Secretary Gowley. Thanks very much, Governor. As the Governor said, uh, our first priority here is public safety in this instance. Um, we, we can tell you what we know and what our investigation has said so far, but obviously our investigation into this matter is ongoing. Uh, we believe that the sag in the bridge deck uh, was caused by the settlement of one of the bridge piers uh, that's on land, on the obviously on the east approach to the bridge. Um, the pier settled a little over two feet. Uh, what we're doing right, we're doing a couple things right now in our investigation. One is we will be taking regular periodic measurements of that pier to see if it is continuing to settle or if, or if the settlement has stopped. We'll also be taking a look at all the other piers on the bridge to see if there uh, is any settlement ongoing in any of the other piers of the bridge. I want to emphasize that at this point the bridge is not in any kind of danger of collapse. Um, a portion of it has settled uh, as a result of the pier settlement, but the bridge is not in, in danger of collapse. Um, we understand certainly the importance of the bridge to uh, the regional economy here in northeastern Wisconsin, so we will be working as uh, timely as we can. Um, but again, our first priority is going to be public safety, so at this point it's really impossible for us to say how long an investigation might take, but as, as the governor said, we will periodically update uh, update you on, uh, on where we're at with that. Um, we've also worked together with law enforcement in the Green Bay area here on uh, alternative routes. We understand the disruption this is going to cause the traffic, as the governor said, about 40,000 vehicles per day on the Frigo Bridge. Um, I guess I would defer to our region director, Will Dorsey. He can maybe talk a little bit about um, all traffic uh, diversion and alternatives that are going to be available to people. And we're certainly going to ask for everybody in the region to cooperate with us as we work uh, as quickly as we can to first identify the scope of this problem, then determine how we're going to uh, go about repairing it, and, and then move forward with those repairs. Uh, this is a significant incident, though, and so it is not, you know, it's going to be something that's going to take us some time both to investigate and, and ultimately to solve. So, Will, I don't know if you want to say a few things about the Kim. Okay. I have a little presentation plan for you, but I'm going to go over some of the things, some of the things you've heard already, but uh, I'm going to go through them again. First of all, early this morning, approximately 4.51 a.m., a motorist uh, determined that there was a sag on the east side of the bridge as he, he or she drove across it, reported to the uh, Green Bay Police Department. The Green Bay Police Department closed the bridge at approximately 5.30 this morning. We've closed, we've closed the stretch of I-43, including the bridge, between Atkinson Drive and Web to Webster Avenue 
uh, those interchanges do remain open. No one, no one should be on any part of the bridge or try any of the approaches or approach any of the piers. Those areas are blocked off. Nobody, including the media, should be on the bridge. Stay off the bridge. 400 feet of the bridge has sagged on the east side of the bridge across all lanes between Quincy Street and the Fox River. That's over land and not over water. Apparently one of the piers, Pier 22, on the east side of the bridge has settled, causing the settling. As you've been told, region and state bridge experts are currently investigating the problem. We're also investigating whether any of the other piers are affected. The length of this bridge closure and the correction of the problem is under investigation. We can't really tell you how long the bridge is going to be closed, but you can plan that it's going to be closed for quite some time. How long that is, I don't know. No one can answer that question right now. Some quick bridge facts for you. The bridge was built in 1980. It's 120 feet from the bottom to the water. It's 7,983 feet long. Approximately, as you've heard, 40,000 vehicles per day uses the bridge. The bridge was last inspected of August of 2012. I believe you were given copies of that bridge inspection report. Bridge was determined sound. We did have a project up there in 2012 and 2013. It was a bridge deck overlay. This bridge is not considered structurally deficient or fracture critical. It's not on any list. Um, the bridge, as I say, was determined sound. What's next? We're going to determine the cause of the problem and if any of the rest of the bridge has been affected. Right now we don't have a timeline on that. We cannot say how long the bridge is going to be closed, but this is a significant event. I'm going to have Dale Weber. He's our lead bridge engineer. He's going to show you where Pier 22 is, and I think he's got a couple other things he's going to talk about. Mark, can you get the pictures up? Dale, right. okay. yeah, you want to come on up? Okay, this is a view looking uh, from the north for the bridge, and you can see the sag right here. And this is Pier 22 right here. That's the pier in question that has a settlement approximately 20 inches, we're thinking at this point. We haven't determined it full. We're, we're taking survey data on it now and to determine exactly what the movement is, and we're also monitoring in case of this future movement to see what's going on there right now. Get back. This is looking uh, from the south side, and again, this is Pier 22. The double hammerhead pier, um, I think that's all I really can add about that, I suppose. What's a double hammerhead pier? A double hammerhead pier, basically, it kind of looks like a hammerhead here. It's, a, um, it's one pier to handle the entire, all, both, both lanes of traffic, one pier cap to handle both lanes of traffic. Then it has two stems coming down, um, and they each have uh, this, well, one continuous footing underneath the entire thing, and it's supported by pilot. This is showing um, below, this is Pier 22 footing right here. And I was talking about the footing. This is the footing, the concrete footing. It's, just, it's basically, it goes out. This is a stem coming up, one of the stems. And you can see right here, it basically dropped vertically down. It's got a, a sheer plane right there into the earth. Um, we will be making these photos available. Yes. So go ahead. Go ahead. This is not the greatest picture in the world, but it was taken this morning shortly after about 5 o'clock when it was still foggy out. But you can definitely see the approximately 20 inch sag into in, in the uh, span right here. It's about 400 feet from one end to the other where, it, where, the, where the sag is located. Right. That was looking from the northbound, I think it's looking southbound here. And it's the same thing. Both lanes are pretty much equally uh, 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 sag. You know, could you talk a little bit about what you're doing right now in terms of the inspection and uh to determine the issue? Well, we're, it's, it's ongoing right now. What we're trying to do is determine what the cause is, first of all. Could you in front of I'm sorry. What we're trying to do is determine the cause, uh, what, what's the cause of this situation here. Uh, we're doing uh, we're survey information. We're taking uh, constant measurements on that pier, not only on other piers adjacent to it to make sure nothing, nothing is moving or what's happening right there. We're going to be taking some soil information uh, near the piers to see if uh, what's going on below, uh, trying to determine exactly what happened there. Um, this particular pier is supported by 40 piles, so it's kind of interesting uh, what, how this could have happened. So we're, we're, it's something new that we haven't really ever dealt with before, so we're, uh, we're, we're looking into it very closely and trying to determine the cause of it. Dale, explain the, the inspection report that we handed them. I believe there's various sections of the pier, and this was, though the whole pier is, is inspected every two years. Uh, explain what, we, what you gave to them. The bridge is inspected on a 24-month cycle. 
Um, and each, if you look at the inspection report that I was handed out, um, each element of the bridge is, is inspected um, individually. And there's an element on there for the, uh, for the pier in particular. And it's, it's rated on a one to five scale, one being perfect condition, five being bad condition. And you can see it's in good condition. Um, there was no indications at the time of the inspection of any stress into the pier or anything like that. We didn't notice anything that was, uh, would have caught, uh, would have been of any concern. Um, so. Dale's going to be available later for questions and for interviews, but let's finish up here. Okay, I got a lot of questions about traffic cameras. Uh, there was, we use those traffic cameras for a reason, that is to watch traffic. There's no traffic on the bridge, so we did move the cameras away from the bridge and onto adjacent intersections, and uh, our traffic engineer is going to speak a little bit about that. Um, again, uh, we don't know how long the, qu the closure is going to be. Motorists should begin to plan on alternate routes. We're working closely with law enforcement to uh, prepare traffic and assist traffic on these new routes. And um, talking to you a little bit about the new routes, frankly, we're going to have Randy Asman come up here. Many of you are familiar with Randy. He's done a lot of public presentations uh, about roundabouts and such. He's going to talk to you a little bit about the traffic patterns out there. Randy? First and foremost, we want to thank those that live and travel through Brown County for their patience over the course of the last uh, number of years. There's been tremendous uh, construction activities that have gone on that require your cooperation, and, and today is the beginning of another one of those, those circumstances. Um, the project now, as it stands, is, is nothing new to the, to the traveling public. What we're going to need is we're going to need those that don't need to use the freeway system to stay off the freeway system. There's so many people in, in the county that, that will jump on Highway 41 or 43 to get to the next interchange. What you're going to see with this, with this diversion now is a lot of traffic is going to be using the obvious 43 to 172 and 41 and so on. We're going we're gonna to have backups if everyone uses this route and no one uses the other city streets. So there's, there's going to be a balance. At the same time, you're going to experience some delays on, on the city side. So already what we've done today is worked with the uh, Green Bay Public Works Department and Green Bay Police Department to help strategize on how we're going to be able to move traffic around safely and efficiently. Um, today we, we turned on approximately nine or ten message boards. We used about 20 highway cameras to figure out what's the best way to take care of our issues for traffic today. And we're already put in, we're changing message boards this afternoon to figure out and uh, uh, um, to let people know what's the best route for them to take and, and, and work their right way around. So again, in a nutshell, the, 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 the alternate route is 41 to 172, uh, back to 43. That's one of the alternate routes for those that need to use the freeway system. Um, some local traffic that wants to go from just simply one side of the river to the other, there's a, a local detour um, that's already signed and, and you have that handout, and that, that is signed alternate I-43. Um, of course, there's going to be congestion on both of these routes. So over the course of the next few days, it's going to take some time for people to figure out what's the easiest and quickest way for them to get to work or, or, or so on. So again, you know, that's what we're doing. We'll continue to work with um, the police department and the highway department. Um, to determine what things we need to change. You know, we'll be talking uh, later today, yet tomorrow morning, and figure out what do we need to do differently, if anything, than what we've already done uh, to help manage that traffic. Thank you, Randy. <clears throat> Just a couple of more things before we get to your questions. First of all, you're probably wondering about the US-41 impacts. There's not going to be any short-term impacts on our work out there. We're going to continue with the Hanson Road bridge removal where we're going to have a full closure again tonight and, and uh, Thursday night. However, for the longer term uh, impacts, we're going to continue to investigate. The 41 team is going to continue to investigate the ramifications of this closure. Obviously, our number one concern is public safety. And next is mobility. We want to keep people moving through Brown County. And we're going to have to match that with the work we still need to do out on 41. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests for media tours. We're not planning on any media tours right now. Uh, staff have been adamant. We don't want anybody up on or near the bridge right now until we get some more things figured out. 
Um, we're being very judicious with allowing our staff up there. And uh, frankly, we're not going to be offering any media tours. Certainly not today. I don't even know if we're going to be doing that tomorrow. Mark and I have asked the question, but this is not a good time. Now, before we get to our questions, I know we have the mayor here and the county executive. Gentlemen, would either of you or both of you like to say a few words before we move on? Welcome to. You got the whole state watching. So. Yeah, we're going. You know, as was stated, you know, this is a, a, quick come up here. Um, a, a, an economic corridor for the Brown County, for the city of Green Bay. And um, I want to thank the people who are so responsive, especially the governor, for, for coming here today to uh, tell the community that this is a top priority uh, for the state of Wisconsin. And, um, you know, we, we very much, you know, need this, this bridge to be fixed as soon as possible. But... Um, you know, we're also looking at, uh, we met this morning and the, the routing of traffic uh, uh, it, through the city of Green Bay. We have uh, officers on duty that are uh, actually uh, there. We're going to synchronize the lights better. And um, look, we're, 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 we thank God no one got hurt uh, in this incident. And um, we know we have the team uh, together here that, that we can you know, rectify this as safe and as soon as possible. So I, again, Governor, thank you for being here, Mr. Secretary and uh, especially the DOT department for their support of this, uh, this project. Uh, similar to what uh, the mayor uh, had stated, and thank you, Governor, for being here, it's uh, important that we recognize that this bridge does really uh, move traffic, in estimated 40,000 uh, vehicles. But more importantly, this bridge is really important um, as we look to see what the investigation does uh, entail our port um, and making sure that we can move goods uh, through the waterways. Um, you know, I, obviously we're really concerned and, and interested in seeing what the investigation and the timeline. Um, moving from that and the decisions of what will happen that, we have to make sure that we're clear to the public that give extra time driving to your destinations. It's, there is going to be uh, traffic delays and uh, Brown County Public Works along with the Sheriff's Office and the port look to work with uh, the DOT and in, in resolving in whatever capacity that we can be a partner to make sure that this bridge um, is put put back into place and uh, allowing commerce to move through. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Randy, come on up here. Dale, come on up here too. No doubt most of the questions will be going to you guys. Okay, do we have any questions right now? We're going to quite some time. Is that weeks, months? You know, I know it's, it's, We're not going to try to define it. Um, I'm not going to call, I'm not going to mention other bridges. One of the questions could be, has this happened to other bridges similar? Not that I know of. We're obviously still researching into that, but nothing that comes to mind. So to begin to even put a timeline on that, except to say, don't plan on using Leo Frigo anytime soon, is about the best we can offer. But when you say anytime soon, I mean, you're, you're talking months here? Could be months, could be a year. They were talking about taking measurements movement of the bridge at Pier 22 as well as movement at other parts. I mean, how long will you evaluate that before you then move on to see what you need to do to replace that part of the bridge? We're going to take as long as it takes to do it properly. I'm sure it's going to be several days. I would be surprised if it was any less than a week. Um, but we can't tell you right now. This has just happened. It's something new to us. We want to go slowly and we want to do it right. Dale, would you like to add anything to that? I think, I think that's, a, that's a good point it's it's, it's, it's a no time no way to determine exactly how long it'll take i mean we're looking at options right now basically what we're what we're going to do to determine the problem so it's kind of hard to really put a put a time frame on that i guess sure. is this can you say this is related or not to the the deck repair that was going on in this summer we don't believe it is um but we're looking at everything again this is a surprise uh, we're not going to minimize that, and it's, it's a significant event. So if there could be a connection, we don't think so, but that doesn't mean we're not going to consider it. I have gentlemen in the back. How, about how far is this pier from the water's edge? It's about, uh, I would say it's about 700 feet away from the water's edge, uh, maybe 1,000 feet, somewhere in that area. I never really looked real close. What's either. your best guess as to when this sagging or sinking likely occurred? talking within the past 24 hours, within the past week? It happened in a short period of time. I mean, um, we're thinking somewhere between 9 o'clock last night and 
445 when it was reported somewhere in that area. That's what I thought is. Go ahead. Can, can you explain um, what this pier is? You call it the Hammerhead Pier. Explain what it is. Somebody mentioned something about 40 pilings. What what exactly it is and how far down it goes? Do those pilings all go right into the bedrock? I mean, what, what is the, They'll come uh, over by the ship. Um, basically, uh, if we should have a better picture of it, but anyway, it's you've got the two stems coming down which support the, the pier. There's a, there's a footing below it, which is six foot uh, thick, below that. And below that, you've got piling. You've got 40 H piling that go down into the substrata, and they go down approximately 100 feet below that. So, um, we have the picture up now, too. Oh, you can kind of see it here. These are two stems I was talking about. Um, Basically, going about 100 feet below that with the uh, with the piling, and then as far as going into the bedrock, and we're trying to determine that right now. We're looking into the historical data from the uh, construction of the bridge, and trying to determine exactly where they're located in, in regards to the, uh, to the bedrock. How difficult of a process is this? I mean, you have to go. I mean, how are you going to go underground to see, you know, what's going on below the surface here, 100 feet below the surface? I mean. Well, I want to preface that with any time you're starting to deal with subterranean engineering. It's no question it's tricky. Yeah. It really is tricky. But go ahead, you can finish. Well, there are some different techniques. I mean, simple as excavating down. Maybe there is an issue close to the surface. You can excavate down and find it. Um, there are other methods, uh, ultrasonic testing, I think they can use to uh, determine the, the structural capacity of the, uh, of the H piling. Um, we're looking at all options right now, though. Have we begun any of that today? We're, we're talking about it right now. We are determining what we can be done. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of worried, not worried, we're kind of looking into stability issues right now before we jump into it. So sure. it's being talked about with that. Sure, again, we're moving slowly. We're moving carefully. We want to make sure we know what we're doing is the right thing. Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, so one question for you, Dale. I, on the inspection list here, it says there were cracks on the column. And is the column what the pier is supporting? Yes. Okay, so put those from the inspection in the vault and any sort of sign to shift it? Well, those notes on there, we, we check that when we inspect every 24 months. We, we kind of compare our notes on that. And in that case there, we looked into it. The cracking basically is just some uh, cosmetic shrinkage cracking that you find in most piers. It's, it's nothing structural. And we monitor that every, every inspection. So we kind of track it to see if anything's changing on it. And in that case, nothing has. Having something shift so quickly, what kind of We don't know at this point. We don't know until we get more uh, information and more survey data. It's hard to tell exactly um, what it is. And you may remember um, the bridge collapse in Minnesota like six years ago. How close do you think we were to that happening here with the bridge shifting so quickly, less than 12 hours? It's hard to determine that. I mean, looking at it at this point, it doesn't look like it's in any, any danger of collapsing. We don't believe it is at all. But, um, you know. It's Let's reiterate, no. um, I, it's easy to draw um, examples from other bridges, and I understand you're going to do that, and I don't blame you. If I was on your side of the camera, I'd be doing the same thing. You really can't do that because this is a whole different bridge. It's a whole different situation than anything we've had in the state, certainly anything we've had outside of the state. Folks, it's a brand new event. It just happened this morning, and we're trying to be careful. We do not believe the bridge is going to collapse, and that's what you should report, is that we don't believe the bridge is going to collapse. However, we are make, taking the, the measures we need, the safety measures, in order to keep people safe, keep our crews safe, as we determine what's happening. The governor's already told you that we're going to come up with another, we're going to come to you with another update in 24 hours. We hope we have more for you. We just don't have that much for you right now. I'm going to take a couple more questions and then we will go on to our individual Mr. interviews. Mr. Go ahead. Uh, a, uh, go ahead. Milwaukee, do you, would, would you consider uh, looking into a, a situation in Milwaukee back in 2000 when a section of the home bridge kind of did the same thing? Would you, would you consult with the folks that worked on that? We will consult because, frankly, some of the folks that worked on that, I'm sure, are going to be involved with this. Um, the hone was a different situation, as I understand it, was the structure above the deck and not the pier. Uh, that's correct. Um, so it was different. Obviously, there's some similarities. A major bridge. We have to completely shut it down. It's going to impact your local uh, transportation infrastructure. So 
and like I believe I got a question earlier uh, from, from this young woman. What about the work that we did last, last year on there? Did that impact it? We're going to look at it all. We're going to look at it all. If it's determined that that section of the bridge needs to be repaired, is it possible to just repair that section of the bridge, or are you talking about rebuilding in more it's, than just It's that? too early. It's too early to tell that. Um, uh, speculation, conjecture, this is a big deal. How big, we're not sure, and we're a long way from figuring out the fix. Since you first discovered this sagging, uh, what, 12, 15 hours ago, have you detected any further sagging? I don't believe so, Dale. We haven't detected anything yet. We're doing or ongoing right now. But at this point, nothing has, it doesn't appear that anything is, is settling further. Okay, we're going to take just a couple more questions and then we're going to call it. Go Any Indiana ballpark figure and who pays for that? I'm sorry? Uh, ballpark figure on the cost of uh, repairs and no. where does that money come from? No, we, we know we're going to fix it. We're not sure how long. We're not sure how much it's going to cost, but obviously, this is an important bridge to the state of Wisconsin, and it's going to get fixed. Is, is settling a part of the inspection? Do you look into that every time you do an inspection on the bridge? We do a visual. We do a, a visual below the substructure units and, and look at that. And in the case of this, there was nothing that ever showed up. There's no calculated measurement of the. It's it's a visual inspection. Yes. Um, if we have any indication that there's some kind of movement, we could take further measures. But in yeah. this case. And just give us an idea, in this scenario, is that pier, Pier 22, going to have to be replaced to, to rectify the situation ultimately? I would, in my, in my opinion, yes, I think it would have to be replaced, yes. Um, because I don't know how you can repair something like that. And we don't, first of all, we don't know what, what caused it. So we have to figure out what's going on below the surface before we decide what we can do. But. So portions of the, of the bridge decking would have to come down in order to do that? Possibly. Or, possibly, but right. You're doing a little bit too much con conjecture. It sounds like we might have to replace the pier, but, um, but we're not sure. Uh, the governor would like to say a couple of words, and then we're going to conclude this, uh, this news conference. We'll certainly be available for individual interviews. Just one last thing on, on the question before. Um, as I mentioned at the onset, our number one priority uh, is public safety, not just for the general public, but we want to make sure all the men and women, the professionals, the Department of Transportation, and any of the partners we have from local government, as well as the offer we've had from the federal government to come in, uh, that all our professionals looking at the bridge inspection are safe as well. Uh, so that's our priority. But, but the reason we're here today, the Secretary and I came to join uh, with, uh, with our team here in northeastern Wisconsin, is to reinforce first and foremost that public safety, but secondarily, um, as the mayor and the county executive talked about, this is a regional transportation and commerce uh, issue. This is one that we are committed uh, to, and obviously we don't know today what the cost impact is going to be, but I'm here to tell you that the state of Wisconsin is committed, once we know the full details of what's required uh, to fix this bridge, we will fix this bridge because it's not only important to Green Bay and to Brown County, it's important to the state of Wisconsin, and that's why we're here today. Thank you very much. As I've said, we'll be available for individual interviews, and um, again, we'll be back talking to you more about this tomorrow. Thank you. If you want emails of these pictures, give me your, uh, give me your business card for your emails on right now. Yes. Get the info for the pictures. What's that? Will you give Tim a card? Do you have a card with you? I, I know. I don't have business cards.